Hey everyone, I'm excited to share today's video with you guys. So today we are going to make fresh milled whole wheat bread. So why make fresh milled whole wheat bread <laughs> is it just has so many more nutritional benefits to you and your body than regular store-bought bread. Now I am not at the point of replacing the bread from the grocery store for my family. That would take a lot. I really, that's one of my goals. I would really like to get there, but I'm not there yet and that's okay. So just doing what we can where we can, you know, those little changes make a, a make a big difference. So today I'm going to walk you all through how I do this and the recipe that I have. So this is actually my very well loved recipe, as y'all can tell. Um, and this is whenever I want to double it, like I make notes for myself, just being a large family that helps me whenever I want to double or triple a recipe of how I normally do it. Today, I'm just going to do one recipe and that makes two loaves of bread. So with this, I do want to mention, I have a dear sweet friend who taught me how to make bread, how to grind the wheat, all of this. She has taught me so much in my life. She's also a mother to 11 children and has just blessed me so much. So I'm excited to share this with you guys, the recipe, and it's actually the bread Becker's recipe. Um, this is the wheat that I have been using now. I do also want to share that I'm going to switch to Azure Standard Wheat Berries. It is organic and I, this doesn't say organic on it. So honestly, I, it just didn't even occur to me that maybe this could potentially be sprayed with something. So that stinks, but I also, I'm still going to use what I have because again, we just have to do what we can where we can. And you know, I invested some money into this. So we are going to use what we have. And then whenever I'm done with this, I will be buying organic wheat berries from Azure Standard. So I'm excited to share this with you guys. So what I purchased, this comes in a can. I have really liked this because it's just easy to store because once I open it, you know, I grind it all and then I can store the rest in the freezer because it will go bad if you don't put it in the freezer once it's in flour form. But again, learning, um, we will be switching and then I will be storing into food buckets after that. So first step is opening up the can, which I already did. You know, it's just all stored are the wheat berries in here. I just, I don't know, I just like it all. The texture, I just enjoy doing this. Um, and I will also write out the recipe in the description box below for you. Um, so let's get started. Okay, so the first step is to grind your wheat. I have a Nutra mill. There are other grinders out there available. The Wonder Mill, and I can't remember what the other one is called off the top of my head. But in my opinion, this is the most affordable electric mill. Um, that's why I chose it and it works very well. You know, I can grind corn if I wanna make my own cornmeal and I can do other things with it as well. So this is the container that collects the flour once it is ground. Um, and it's just very simple. You pour your wheat berries in here um, for doing flour, I have it on the fine setting. It is rather loud, but I will show that to y'all in a second. And then your feed rate, you know, how fast you want it to go through. So I will simply just pour the wheat berries into here and grind it up. You can also get a hand grinder, which there is a huge benefit to that. If you are ever without power or if you're camping, so on and so forth, you know, a hand grinder would be good to have on hand. I do not have one. This is all that I have used. Um, and like I said, it works very well. So I'm going to pour my wheat berries into this. A big thing that you want to make sure, because I have this out to show y'all the container, is to make sure this is pushed in all the way. Ask me what happens if it's not. <laughs> Flour goes everywhere. We have done that before. Oh my goodness. So this will go through. I, like I said, I have it on the fine setting. I'm gonna turn it on. It is rather loud. And then we can just watch it go down. Do you want some bread? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we are done. So we pull the canister out, set it over there on the counter. Yeah. Open it up. That's a lot of flour. It is a lot of flour. 
All right, so gotta get the rest of the ingredients and get the mixer. We're gonna move the. I know. So clean up the Nutri-Mill and get that out of the way because we don't have a whole lot of space. Yes. So there it is, all ground. Yeah, you like it. All right, so the first part is getting your yeast. So I'm doing one and a half tablespoons of yeast. And you want your water warm, but not too hot. So we're gonna add that in. And then I always mix it a little bit. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, turn that off. Always, thank you. Get it mixing a little bit and then we're gonna do two and a half cups of flour and then we're gonna let that sponge and mix for like 15 minutes sorry I said two and a half cups of flour two cups of flour so I've got my flour over here so one Two. And we will get this started and let it sponge for 15 minutes. Okay, it has been 15 minutes. Ooh. This is what it looks like. Okay, so now I'm going to add anywhere from four to five cups of flour. I live in Florida. It's humid here, so I don't know if humidity makes you need more flour, but I tend to always need to have, to be on the higher end of flour whenever I'm doing baking. Okay, so there's kids in the background. Real life around here, we got a bunch of kids. Harper's going to start unloading the dishwasher. I'm going to start adding the flour into our mixer. I like to add about a cup and a half of flour at a time and get that mixed in, and then, you know, I'll keep adding more until it looks good. Okay, I've already added two and a half teaspoons of salt, a third cup of oil. So I'm sure y'all know this, but the trick is you do your oil first and then your honey will come right out. Now we will do a third cup of honey. All right, now get the honey in there. Pours right on out. Isn't that amazing with just simple ingredients? We can have good bread. Yep. There's one. About a half. All right, push it down. The mixer. You gotta push the button. Oh. All right, then. Wait, click, click, click. Go with the button. Okay, all right. Turn it on number one. Okay. Okay, so this is gonna make four, oh, four cups total. We'll get that mixed in. Is that good? Yeah. Four? Yep, no, that's, I'm saying that there's a total of four in here. Um. Okay, so got my dough out. So now I'm gonna knead it for a little bit. I am not the world's best kneader. I like to let the mixer do the bulk of the work. But truly, we haven't messed this bread up yet. <laughs> so at this point, you can braid it if you want, which looks gorgeous. I am not that patient, <laughs> so my oldest daughter will sometimes braid it for me, but she's still doing school. So this is just gonna get flopped in a pan and we will just eat it. It doesn't have to be pretty. <laughs> okay, so this is just gonna get cut in half. Reagan has sprayed some bread pans for me. And bring them here, Reagan. I'm gonna kinda just get this more. Shape of a loaf. Hmm? Uh, yeah, don't <laughs> All right, so we've got these in the bread pans and these will rise for anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. Okay, so the bread rose for just over about 40 minutes roughly. There is a bread proofing button on this oven, so I tried that for the first time and I think it worked out pretty good. Okay, so now I am preheating the oven to 350 and it will bake for 30 minutes. So I think that looks pretty good. It was a little, this pan always makes it more poofier than this one. 
I guess this one is slightly wider and maybe that's why. Anyway, so this will be ready to go in the oven once the oven is preheated and baked for 30 minutes. They're so poofy. Ooh. I'm glad I checked on them. They're getting a little, a little well done. Can you stop the timer? All right, there they are. So like I said, it got a little toasty. I am still getting used to this oven. I've made bread before. I don't know why. I'm glad that I checked on it whenever I did though. So all is well. So I'm actually trying to make bagels, um, whole wheat bagels as well. This is my first time. Look how poofy that is. That's so exciting. So I will get those worked up in a little bit. But for now, this video, we are focusing on homemade bread and it is done, y'all. I know whenever I was wanting to make bread, it very much intimidated me, but I am here to tell you it is not as hard. I mean, there's some flops, but that's how we learn. So I just want to encourage y'all that even if you don't have a grinder or, you know, whole wheat, you know, make bread from scratch. You can buy whole wheat flour. I mean, I do think that, you know, grinding your wheat, there's more nutritional benefits to it, but just get started, try. Also there's sourdough bread out there. I am still experimenting with that as well. So this is how I make our bread. The kids absolutely love it. So does Nathan. It's more of like a treat in my household. Again, like I said at the beginning of this video, I do want to get to the point that I am replacing our bread, but I am doing what I can for now. This bread will be so good with dinner tonight. I plan on slicing it up and making garlic toast out of it. I have done it before and it is delicious. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us and we will see y'all in the next video.